Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make a pattern that's called Pebble Path. I think it's called that because the big and little squares almost look like stones that you might have in a pathway out in your garden. This is a pattern from Cozy Quilt Designs and it's written by Daniela Stout. I always enjoy her patterns. They're very easy to follow. Now it uses layer cakes and we're using one called Machiko. It has Asian styled prints with metallic gold accents. We're gonna need 26 of the layer cake squares. So let's go ahead and open it up and pick those out. My husband, Matt, cut these out from fabrics from Macauer. And we wanna pick the ones that are a little bit darker. We've got a lot of different colors here. And the reason we wanna pick the darker ones out is because this is the background and I want these fabrics to show up nicely against that. Here are the 26 that I've selected. 17 of them stay 10 inches. The other nine are going to get subcut. We also need to subcut the background, and I don't think I mentioned you need four and five eighths yards of the background. Now I can't give you all the sizes because it's not my pattern, but Cozy Quilt Designs patterns are always very easy to follow. Okay, everything is all cut out now. And what we're gonna do is take our smaller squares, our two skinniest strips here, and our shortest rectangles over to the sewing machine. I'm going to grab a matching pair of these. So let's get two that are alike, and two of these rectangles, and we will stitch them on to the ends just like this. If your print has a one-way design, like if the fish were all facing in one direction, you'll need to turn one of the blocks around. And the pattern does give you that information, but all of my prints, they're not one, they're not one way. They're all directions the same. So finger press the seam allowance toward the darker piece. Now this one gets turned like that. And we're going to take two of the shorter rectangles and we're going to stitch this together. These seams all get finger pressed toward the background. Press that one that way, and that one that way, and there's only one more, piece, one more piece to add. It's this longer one, and it just goes on this one side. So this here is block one. So I'm just going to go ahead and get the rest of those stitched up. Okay, those are done. All we have to do is give them a quick pressing. The second block takes the 10 inch squares, the biggest rectangle, and then the next size down rectangle. Let's get one of each piece. Each rectangle and one of the blocks. And all we have to do is put this one here. Finger press the seam toward the background. And then we'll add that last rectangle. And this also gets pressed toward the background. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch up the rest of these. Both blocks are done and we're ready to lay out the quilt. It's a very simple layout because we keep all the blocks facing the same way. 
So let's see, let's put that one there. That one there, and one more of this kind over here. Better slide over some. So there's five in the first row. Second row, it's st we're still just alternating. We're not turning anything. Every block is facing exactly the same way. There, that's the last two squares, and you can really start to see the pathway now. You see these big squares, and then the little squares, which are in twos, and I tried to balance the colors so that the blues are sprinkled throughout. We've got a little pink, a little red, and I don't know if you can see from back there, but the cream that goes, it goes all around those two edges, but not these two. So there's an easy way to fix that. The pattern has us put a border just onto these two sides, and that will make the whole quilt symmetrical then. So then we'll have that going all the way around. So it's gonna be real easy to sew these blocks together. They're nice and big. There's no seams to match. So I'm gonna stitch these up, get those two borders on, and load it onto the quilting machine. The quilt is all loaded up. We need to pick a thread color. There are actually a lot of colors that would look good on here. And this is one of those that has a lot of background or negative space. So if we wanted to use a darker color and have the quilting show a lot, we could. So this dark blue, that would be a good choice. That will really show up. This will show up a little bit. It's kind of a medium blue. It's not gonna show up much. It's not gonna fight with all the prints in there. Now I thought gold would be a nice choice because a lot of these prints have that metallic gold accent. So that one would be good. This one won't show at all in the background. And most of the prints have so much going on that will still look good. Now gray, gray makes a great neutral selection. And that's gonna show up not much. It's gonna blend in pretty well. Hmm. I really think I'm just gonna go with the most neutral color here. For the quilting pattern, I wanted something that would blend in with most of the prints. So I picked this pattern called Butterfly Swirls. The butterflies are pretty subtle, but you can see them there. And it's a nice, even quilting pattern, and that'll look really good on this quilt. Okay, the quilt is all quilted, and now we are ready to work on the binding. So the first step is to trim off all this excess. So I've got my cutting board here on the table, and I'm gonna take my blade and my ruler, and I'm going to, you can't really see because the uh, background is almost the same color as the batting, but I'm lining this up along the seam line there. So it's lined up right here along the seam. And so I know that my quilt will be nice and straight. And I'm gonna trim off the excess backing and batting. So I'm gonna do a little at a time. So you can see it's trimming everything there. And then I'll keep moving this up and I'm lining it up again on that seam. And I'll keep trimming. And I'm gonna have to move my cutting board at some point so I don't hit my table. So I'm going to trim it all the way around all the edges. Once the quilt is all trimmed, it's time to get the binding ready. I always cut my binding strips this direction, so they're going to be real long. They're, each one is going to be about 45 inches long. The quilt is 67 by 93, so I'm going to need nine pieces. I usually fold my fabric in half 
because I can cut four layers easily and that saves me a little bit of time and it helps me be nice and accurate. For my binding, I use two and a half inch wide strips. That seems to work the best for me. It's a nice, easy amount. It's a nice, easy width, so I know I can fold it successfully and get it on the quilt. Some people like to use two and a quarter. I find that a little bit harder for me to work with, but it certainly is a matter of personal preference. We've got all our strips here at the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch them into one really long piece. So I've got these two ends here, right sides together, and I'm using a pretty deep seam allowance here. But then I'm going to trim it off to one quarter inch. A lot of sewers like to use a bias seam here. They like to sew it so that the seam won't end up like this, the seam will end up like that and that will reduce the bulk when you're stitching your binding onto your quilt but i've found that this method works almost just as well as long as you trim it to a quarter inch you won't have any problem getting it onto your quilt the next step is to iron this in half so i'm ironing it with the wrong sides together i'm just making those edges meet up there and I'm just gonna do a few inches at a time, and then I'm gonna add some steam. A few more. And when I come to a seam allowance, you can do all the seam allowances ahead of time if you like, but when you come to a seam allowance, iron these open. Then we will continue ironing and folding for the whole long strip. I'm here at the machine with all of the binding ironed nicely, and I'm going to start stitching it on about a foot down from the corner, and I'm gonna leave about six inches loose here. So I'm lining up all the raw edges, and I'm going to use a quarter inch seam allowance. So be careful to not stretch the quilt or the binding as you sew it on. And just go a few inches at a time. I'm coming to the first corner here. I want to stitch down till I'm one quarter inch away from this bottom edge here. So the easiest way for me to do that is to kind of look back here, see where the quarter inch is, and then I'm gonna stick a pin just like that. I'm not gonna stitch over it, but that helps tell me where to stop stitching. So I'm gonna to go to the pin. You may have to uh, move your flywheel by hand here and then back up a little. Now take it out of the machine and you need to turn the quilt 90 degrees here. And then we're going to fold this back. The fold should go right toward the corner. It's at a 45 degree angle. And then fold this part down so that this fold is even with those raw edges. Now you can feel with your fingers here, this part will flip back and forth. And so that line right there, where that line and these line intersect, it's right here and that's that same spot that we stopped stitching a minute ago and that's where we want to start now so again I'm not going to leave the needle the pin in there I'm going to move it out of the way put my needle down take about three stitches then back up and then I'm just going to keep stitching and use that same procedure when I come to each corner I've gone all the way around all four sides and I'm back to where I started. So I'm going to stop sewing here and I'm going to trim off the extra. I want to leave a half inch for seam allowance. So a half inch extra between here and here. I'm just going to eye it up, but you can measure if you like. 
now stitch these two together using a quarter inch seam. It's a little bit hard to get everything pulled into place, but you can. And I'm just going to finger press this seam open. Refold the binding. And now it's just the length we need to stitch that last. It's just the length we need to lay nice and flat on here so we can stitch this last little bit up. trim off all these extra threads here. All right, it's pretty neat now. The next step is to open this up and pull your finger or your fingernail down this edge. So I'm ironing it. I'm holding it nice and tight here and pressing. I want all of the binding to be pulled away from the quilt. And I'm gonna do this all the way around the whole quilt. Once it's all nice and flat, we're going to turn this to the back side. So I'm just folding the binding over the raw edge there. And I'm not gonna stitch from that side, I'm gonna stitch from the top. So I've changed threads, so I've got this color, I've got matching thread that matches that color on the top, and I'm still using blue on the bobbin. And I'm going to stitch as close to the ditch as I can. So we call it stitching in the ditch, but near the ditch is good enough. So I'm trying to go right along the edge there. So I'm just, every few inches, I'm going to turn more of this to the back side, and I'm gonna hang on to it, and then I'm gonna stitch. And this is what it looks like from the back side. It's about an eighth of an inch away, the stitching there, and it's sewn down very securely. You may find that you like to turn your binding back and put some pins in, or you may find that those little clips work well for you. I just like to turn back a few inches and stitch. Nothing pulls away, and then I know it's very securely turned back, and I'm just gonna keep stitching. So I get to the corner. I'm coming to a corner here. So what I'm going to do is on the far side here, I'm going to fold that to the back side. Make sure that underneath here it stays nice and flat. And what happens is you get a 45 degree angle there and then even with this raw edge, we're going to fold that to the back side. Now, if it doesn't fold with a perfect angle there, you can take a pin here. I'm not sticking the pin in, I'm just sticking it behind the fold and I'm moving that over just a teeny bit till it's exactly in the spot that I want it. Now, I'm just gonna flip this down Hold everything tight. Again, you can use pins if you like. I'm just gonna press down on it and I'm gonna stitch right to that corner and leave the needle down and then pivot. So I'm still gonna hold it, but I'm gonna spin this around here. Take a couple of stitches. Fold a little bit more to the back side. A few more inches here. Keep stitching. And let's see what that corner looks like. So we've got a nice fold here with a nice 45 degree angle, a nice fold there, and you can just see that stitching going around there. So not every corner will come out perfect, but you get better with practice. The Pebble Path quilt is all done, and you can really see those pathways going up the diagonal of the quilt. I really like this because it's got big squares 
which show some of the large scale prints like this that I didn't want to cut up. We've got the nice crane in the middle. And then we've got the quilting, which really doesn't show in the dark areas, but we've got nice shadowing in these light areas. Here's that binding on the edge. And if I run my fingers along here, I can find the seams. I think there's one right there. I can't see it, but I can feel it. And on the back side, you see how securely it's stitched on there? Now, of course, if you prefer, instead of stitching with your machine there, you could whip stitch this from the back side, and then you would have no sewing showing at all. But really, this doesn't show hardly at all, and I think it finishes the, the edges very securely. Now, the quilt turned out 67 by 93, so it's a nice, generous twin size quilt. Thanks so much for watching our tutorial today. We hope you enjoyed it. And you know, if you have questions, you can leave them in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer. Now at the end of every tutorial, we do a giveaway. Today's giveaway is a pattern called Magic Boxes. And this is a line of fabrics from Robert Kaufman called Weather Report. They have lots of interesting textures. Got this big scale print on the backside. A fun project to make, which we have a video to show you how if you want to make your own. But today you can win this one and it's very easy to enter. All you have to do is click the link right below this video that says giveaway and you put in your name and your email address and you might be the winner. Good luck. Now, if you like our tutorials and you want to support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. That really helps us out. Happy quilting.